It was uh, one of the most dramatic days of this strike as the uh, union officials began the imprisonment. So now I now want to cross over. The Senate Health Committee is currently meeting uh, the CS Cleopa Mailu. Let's just cross over there and listen to their discussions. Up to now, they support an action we have taken, um, and that is why we consult them this morning. I spoke to Governor Morutu, and we are arranging to have a meeting this afternoon with the chair of the Health Committee of the Council of Governors and the chair of the Labor Committee, and if not today, tomorrow, so that the issues which arise and recommendations which come out of the Intergovernmental Forum, which is meeting today and tomorrow, they can be endorsed by the, uh, the governors for implementation. Therefore, honorable chair and members of this committee, it's unfortunate Kenyans are suffering and that we should not overemphasize. There is no any explanation which can be given to suggest that the services are running optimally. They are not, especially major hospitals, level five and level four. With the clinical officers, they can do limited work and they are trying their best, even in Kenyatta National Hospital. But we need to resolve this issue so that our doctors can go back to work. In agreement with the contents of the CBA, with a return to work formula, which takes the remuneration of the doctors by 40, 50% with the additional uh, allowance which is given. We believe as a government, we have done, we have moved several steps to ensure we resolve this in person. We have not held back. But, Honorable Chair and members of this committee, we must do things within the law. And you are a better place as far as the law is concerned. We have SRC, which has come up with a job evaluation, whose job evaluation will be implemented from 1st July 2017. That is the body which is supposed to advise us on remuneration of public servants. That will be in July. The additional funding which we have provided as a government as a return to work formula will be over, over, over and above the SRC. SRC implementation will come, which will take four years to complete. And therefore, we believe the position which we have taken in terms of addressing the CBA and the grievances of the doctors, having agreed on the general body, their actions which would have led the union to soften their ground and be able to call off the strike, at least for Kenyans to, resume, to consume services and to allow us to proceed to conclude the CBA. And even if we were to conclude the CBA when the strike is on, Honorable Chair and members of this committee, with the position where we have gotten to, it wouldn't take two days to be able to conclude. That is why my prayer is, let these young men uh, come out of prison or uh, that, and then we shall see whether they'll come to the table and within a day or two, with that understanding, without shifting goals or changing the position, we cannot get a solution for Kenyans to to have the services they much need from the doctors. I'll stop there, Honorable Chair. Thank you. In your statement, you have uh, greatly mentioned the CBA, which is actually the focal point of contention uh, of the demands of the doctors. Do you have a copy of the agreements that you say you went into last night, the, the, the night before yesterday at midnight, uh, with all the signatories of the KMPDU uh, being inserted onto the document? Honorable Chair, I must say I was not a member of the mediation team, 
But I, my team gave me a copy of the document which was signed on 12th February, that is Sunday at night. And this is the document with the signature of the mediator, the person from the ministry, the legal counsel of the Council of Governors, and the Secretary General of the KMPDU. May you therefore highlight in your own words, I hope you have another copy, uh, no. on what you agreed on. I think uh, that is you the only copy I have. Yes. I'll make, make the, the highlights on what you agreed on. What I can say, uh, Honorable, sorry, Honorable Chair, this document in a meeting in Mayfair, personally and with the members of the union, we had gone up to page 10, where we had agreed on most of the issues. And the issues which were identified initially as contentious by the SRC, one was to be able to have a document which accommodates the county governments, because eventually the CBA will have to be signed with the county governments public service boards of the respective counties because they are employers, they are entities in themselves. That is one aspect. And therefore, an agreed document which speaks to the aspirations of the counties was one issue which has been agreed. Number two, one issue which remained contentious was the recognition agreement for the union, doctor's union, by the county governments. As you recall, this document was signed with the national, the Minister of Health then, without involvement of the county governments. And therefore, the agreement which exists between the union and the ministry does not translate to recognition with the counties. Days before into the mediation, a document was agreed upon between the union and the county governments and public service boards that that framework of a recognition agreement was agreeable to both parties and could be signed. Therefore, that is a document which has been agreed and can be signed in, as a prelude to negotiating a collective bargaining agreement. So that is one area where the counties have agreed with the union. And therefore, signing that document will not be a difficult issue and then the agreed document, this one which is signed in my view, is a document which has been discussed by the mediation team and the union and all the parties. And therefore, the agreed position, that is one, in terms of training, in terms of numbers, in terms of every aspect of um, what I might call employee rights and interaction with the union, they have been agreed. The only contentious issue which was going to be discussed is effective date. And those in the labor movement, if they were to advise correctly, a CBA is not retrogressive, it's progressive. And the position of the people before that, that is the ministry and the council of governors, is a CBA which becomes effective from 1st July 2017. That is one area which was uh, not the er only area. Effective date is the area which was not agreed upon in those discussions. And I believe that is the conclusion which needs to be done. And therefore, in absence of with all this being agreed, the only other uh, part which we need to agree is the Appendix A, which is indeed the salary and remuneration. And in our view, with the SRC having pronounced itself, and this CBA becoming effective from 1st July 2017, which the union is of a contrary opinion, then we take the template of SRC and attach to this to become the salaries and remuneration for doctors from July 1st, 2017, for four years, because now CBAs are going into uh, a four-year cycle. Those are, the, these, those are the areas which are uh, agreed upon, and I can give you this uh, document. Somebody can make a copy.
so that I can remain with a copy and give to members that is the document which was signed. The Honorable Chair, I think I want to point out one issue which has been uh, uh, tormenting the discussions we have been having. One of the areas which I note out of the return to work formula, which they wanted to be included in the CBA, is inclusion of Kenyatta National Hospital, Kemri, MR, um, Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital, and all medical schools into the CBA. Any, any institution which employs doctors must be reflected in that CBA. It is my position that CBAs are between an employer and an employee. We cannot draw Kenyatta National Hospital, Moy Kemri, our bodies with the boards, board of directors. And therefore, their terms and conditions of service are even different from the people in the public sector, in the civil service, if I put it that way. They even earn better. And therefore, CBS for those institutions are negotiated with the respective boards. To bring those institutions into the CBA between the counties and the national government, we consider that issue as extraneous. Medical schools and the university, and that is Ministry of Education. We cannot purport to sign a recognition agreement on behalf of medical schools and the universities. So if we tease the issues properly, that will not be a point of departure. We will allow the union to negotiate with the Kenyatta, Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital, to negotiate with Kemri, and if there, there is any membership within the university, that is under the university leadership and the Minister of Education. If they could agree to that, that will not be a point of uh, departure. Honorable Chair, I want to say that residency is a position of training in a university. And the union has endeavored to bring the issues of residency within the uh, CBA. Our position is residency is a training position within the university. And therefore, if there are terms and conditions, even admission must be discussed with the university, not with the Minister of Health, because that is the purview of universities and also the Minister of Education. That is one of the areas where we find there are difficulties. It is important for this committee also through the chair to know that the doctors have endeavored to request or to ask for the ministry, and indeed the government, and the institution, Moy Teaching Referral and Kenyatta National Hospital, to remunerate privately sponsored students. Now, it's our view, privately sponsored un um, uh, students, while they could be members of the union, they are not employees of the ministry, the county government. And therefore, for us to engage in a, in, in a CBA, which brings uh, sponsored students into the CBA, that is not within our purview. That is, in my view, if there is consideration for those students within the institutions where they practice, that is a matter between the university and the respective boards of the institutions which are training. Those are the issues. Honorable Chair and members, which seem to have been taking us back and forward. Having agreed on the employer-employee areas as per that document, and having come back out with a return to work formula, which we think is fair, and having SRC pronounce itself on that, because that uh, they had a meeting of half night, uh, have evening meeting up to midnight with the SRC, and the SRC also met them with the mediators. I think, Honorable Chair, if there is goodwill and um, we focus on having those doctors on the table, then, as I said, it's a matter of a day or two and people reach an agreement. I stop there. May I introduce uh, my new friend, Senator Balwale? It's a friend of this committee. You're welcome. Now, uh, maybe before I open the questions, 
from the members to you. The initial CBA document had areas of contention and especially so raised by the ministry. One, that that document was not registered in court. And two, the authenticity of the signatory. Now, to my knowledge, or to what is in the press, the minister and his peers have not been participating in the mediation committee that came up with that document that you are tabling now. So the question is, won't you again reject it later that it was not signed by the minister and the peers? Number two, number three, if there was a document of agreement that was signed on 12th between the ministry and the doctors, why was that document not produced in court yesterday for the presiding judge not to jail the doctors? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm alive to the fact that uh, you are many times an acting speaker, and uh, I notice that the accounting officer is not here. Uh, the accounting officer at this uh, ministry is uh, the principal secretary. So I would like that clarification. Uh, and if there's a reason why the accounting officer cannot be there, you see if that reason is sufficient for you to accommodate him, uh, less it amounts to the same thing, Mr. Chairman, which you have referred to that we're hearing from the uh, grapevine or the media, uh, that there is unwillingness on the part of the CS, who is my senior colleague in medicine, and uh, the PS, the, 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 the principal secretary, to be cooperative. It could as well be that if we don't allow them to explain, he might be extending that uh, ujanja even to the Senate. Oh, very well, you can uh, also incorporate that uh, uh, into the answer you give. Uh, let me see a copy of uh, invitation that we sent to the ministry, whether the, that uh, uh, absence of the peers is by exclusion from what we wrote from here, or actually we invited him. Let me see that letter again. Thank you, Chair. Uh, through you, Chair, I want to say that I want to first of all clarify that as a ministry and my office, we have been cooperating fully with the mediation team. When it was appointed on Friday, they called me on Saturday, and on Sunday afternoon at 2.30, we held a meeting with the entire team in my office where we got the brief on the approach they are going to have. And in that meeting, two things were agreed upon. That we have to appoint mediation team, and secondly, we have to have a meeting with the Council of Governors, which meeting I was to facilitate them to have with the Council of Governors. Indeed, on Monday, the Council of Governors were meeting, and I took them to the Council of Governors where a meeting was held, they briefed the Council of Governors after I had briefed the Council of Governors in their chambers, and they agreed to cooperate fully with the mediation team. And the Council of Governors was to appoint a mediation team. I want to say that subsequently, on, on, on Monday, that Monday I appointed a mediation team, um, which mediation team comprised the principal secretary, the secretary administration, director of human resource management, and director of curative services in that committee. And therefore, my participation was through that committee, and every morning I received a brief, and they consulted me accordingly. And therefore, as to the matter of the document which was signed, we as a ministry, because our members signed, we ascribe to it, and there is no reason why we should reject it. And having gone through that document, 
is indeed exactly a document which I had prepared on 24th of January, which I gave them in my boardroom. They have borrowed heavily from that, which begs the question, why did they reject the document on 24th? Now, since that document is what they signed, I want to assure you there is no war negating on the document which was signed. Maybe before, As, before you continue, mm -hmm. Secretary, I, I want this to be, to be totally clear. Mm -hmm. The first CBA was rejected, was being rejected by the ministry because Mr. Ball, who had two days been gazetted out of the position, not even transferred yet out of the ministry, you signed that document. Now you are telling us the, the statement that was signed on 12th should be accepted to be authentic, and yet it was not signed by you or the peers. Who signed it and what was the level of seniority of that person and how authentic is it? to be accepted as, a, as, 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 as an official document when it is not signed by the minister and the peers. Honorable Chair, let me clarify. This document was signed by members of the mediating team. The members who are representing the ministry have my mandate because at the end of the discussions, for the comfort of the chair, and I want to read her mind, she had to have the document signed, because as I said earlier, many of the issues we have discussed, they have found people negating, even when they have agreed. And therefore, in my view, it was a wise move by the chair of the mediation committee to have this document signed by all the members who participated up to midnight, so that Come tomorrow, there is nobody who says we, w we were not consulted the way we have seen it go. I want to assure you from where I stand, Dr. Odongo, who signed that document, had my full.